Hi and welcome to Task Pigeon. My name is Paul Towers. I'm the founder and CEO of the company and today I just want to run through a very quick demonstration of Task Pigeon for you. I'm going to dive straight in because I do want to keep this video short to make sure that you're engaged and can get a lot out of it in a very short period of time. First of all, just some context. We are currently logged in as this user here and within her team is also one other user which you can see denoted here. So this is the default view that you'll see when you first log into Task Pigeon. It's what we like to call our task tile view. That said, we do realize that lots of people prefer to work in various ways. And as a result, we have a number of different views available for you. For example, we also have our list view, which allows you to see tasks as they run down the page. And recently we added Kanban boards. With Kanban boards, when you first log in, it will be a blank screen and you can simply hit the plus icon to add as many boards as you like. You then assign a category, for example, finance to a board and it will then populate that board with the tasks associated with that category. The good thing about the um, <clears throat> Kanban board view is that these tiles are independent of one another in terms of how and where they are placed. So you can reorder them so that you can set the priority to match what you need to do first or what's more urgent on your to-do list. You can also simply drag tiles from one side to another to change the category. And this is really handy if you prefer to work in the methodology where you have boards labeled to do, doing and done. I'm just gonna switch that back because the blog post does sit in the marketing category. You can remove any of these boards at any time. It won't delete the tasks. Uh, it simply allows you to recreate your workspace in the method that suits you best. Jumping back to the task tile dashboard, you'll see that we do have some options to sort by date or deadline. Sorting by date essentially puts the most recently created task first, whereas deadline sorts by the deadline in which the tasks are due. Here you can see ASAP, uh, the tasks that show first, followed by the ones uh, with the next closest date, in this case the 13th of April. I'm just going to switch back to the sort by date view for a moment. <clears throat> One of the key differences of Task Pigeon is that we like to um, split our tasks uh, by the group task dashboard and the my task dashboard. So with the group task dashboard, essentially what that means is that any task assigned to any member of your team displays here. This allows you to very easily see who is working on what in your team and get an idea of, you know, if one staff member has too much work on or if someone else perhaps some, has some spare capacity and can help out. Obviously though, uh, as an individual rather than a manager, you might just want to see what you're assigned to. In this case, you can click the My Task dashboard and this will filter to only show the tasks that are assigned to you. As I mentioned, we are logged in as this user here and we can see that each of these tasks have her little profile picture so that we know she has some level of responsibility for them. Now, as a manager, I do spend most of my time in the group task dashboard because I do want to see what everyone on my team is working on. However, as an individual employee, you may prefer the My Task dashboard, in which case you can simply reorder these so that the My Task dashboard is the default uh, when you first log in each day. <clears throat> in addition to that, we have the ability to filter by category. Um, so what you can do here for example is we've got uh, a few different categories. We've got general, marketing, finance, etc. I'm just going to go to the uh, marketing category. This will automatically filter and only show the tasks associated with the marketing category that I am assigned to. If we jump back to the group task dashboard, we can see that in operation for uh, say finance. In this case, we can see that this uh, user here is assigned to that task. His name's Charlie. Whereas if we were to go to the My Tasks category for finance, that task will disappear as our female user is not assigned to that task. <clears throat> Just gonna put back the all categories so that we have a little bit more to look at. While we're here, I'm gonna show you two other very quick things. You'll notice that some of these tasks have the star icon. That corresponds to our in progress dashboard. So you can quickly and easily see what tasks are currently being worked on. We also have the little fire icon, which automatically shows the tasks that are marked as ASAP, and then for tasks that become due within 24 hours. You can filter to see what is due soon by clicking on the due soon dashboard. 
And while we're here, I'm going to show you one other little feature that we have built into Task Pigeon. So in this case, we only have six categories. It's not a whole lot to look at. But in my personal dashboard uh, that I use to run Task Pigeon, I have about 20 or 25 categories. Obviously, not all of them have tasks assigned to them at all times. So you can toggle this little switch here, and that will hide any category uh, that doesn't have any tasks currently assigned to it. Now I'm just going to switch to the completed tasks. We've only got one here, but we can see that this task has been marked as complete. Now within Task Pigeon, there's a couple of different ways that you can uh, create tasks, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But first of all, I'm just going to show you the end result of that. This is one of those views. It is the checklist view. So we've just got a very simple task here, customers to follow up with the name uh, and company name of a few of our contacts. Each of these items can be ticked independently, or you do have the ability to mask the entire task as complete in one go. <clears throat> we do also have general tasks. So for example, here we have a task headline followed by a general description, and we can see who that task has been assigned to. I'll show you how to create tasks. We simply just hit the add new button, and here are the options that I was talking about previously. General tasks, where you have a text-based description, you can uh, highlight the text, underline, bold, etc., number it, add dot points, even add in images if you like, and links, of course. Uh, alternatively, there is the checklist item uh, view where you can add as many checklist items as you like by simply clicking the plus symbol. <clears throat> Just switching back to the general tasks, the same um, is, is going to be evident in the checklist task section as well but you have the ability to set a deadline, either our quick select options, which are today, ASAP, or ongoing, or a custom date, and then once you select the date, a custom time. You can then assign it to a category, or create a new one if you like, and assign it to either one or more users on your team. Here we also have the ability to mark tasks as private. So if you click this little uh, icon here, it'll give some description on what that means. And private tasks are essentially tasks that can only be seen by the user who created the task or is assigned to the task. So that holds true even on the group task dashboard. So say for example, I create a private task associated with a new hiring a new head of sales. Uh, Charlie, although he was in our team, if this task was marked as private, he would not be able to see that. Finally, I just want to run through a new uh, initiative we've launched, which is Marketplace by Task Pigeon. Clicking uh, the Marketplace icon here or within a task will take you to the Marketplace by Task Pigeon homepage. And essentially, this is our strategy to help you take tasks from your to do list and make sure that they are completed on time. At the moment, we are focusing on tasks in the online and digital uh, sphere. So we have writing and editing based tasks, design based tasks, and the ability to hire virtual assistants in blocks of 1, 3, 5, 10, or 20 hours. You can scroll down and see a few other examples here. For example, we have the 1000 word blog post, and you can click on that to view additional information and order it. As I said, the reason why we want to do this is because the whole idea of a task management application should be to empower you and your team members to actually get things done. Now, in this case, let's say that uh, this user here has assigned Charlie uh, this, this task, blog post 101 productivity tips. And let's just say that it needs to be completed by Friday, but it's already Wednesday night and we know that Charlie's just not going to get around to doing it. From the task itself, or within the main dashboard, you can click to outsource that task and it will take you to the marketplace where you can fill in a few details and very quickly have that assigned to one of our pre-vetted uh, freelance writers who are on the platform. We also provide 100% money back guarantee. So if you have that blog post prepared and you are not happy with it, you can simply ask for a refund, no questions asked. All of the freelancers on our platform are pre-vetted by us and have actually been used um, currently uh, for some of some work on task pigeon itself so the blog writers have written some content for our own blog uh, we've also used the virtual assistants in other areas of our business as well so that about wraps up task pigeon and gives you a quick and easy overview of how to use the tool and some of the features and functions of course there is more to dive in and i'm sure that once you start getting uh, familiar with the tool you will uncover additional features like our ability for managers to view uh, their team members' dashboards 
and other things like our integration with Zapier. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. My email address is paul at taskpigeon.co. And of course, you can find all of our contact details on our website, www.taskpigeon.co. Thanks very much.